All right guys, today we're talking about sticks. These sticks. Oh, what Frank didn't mention, one of you is gonna win an entire set of these sticks golf clubs, so stay tuned. All right, Frank, so what do we have here? All right, so what we have here is a setup from a company called Styx, S-T-I-X. And firstly, we'll say this is not a paid review. Uh, they sent us these clubs, however, we did get these clubs for free. They sent us these to try out. So first question, and what we're gonna do is the way we're gonna kind of run through this is first, tell you who they are, we're gonna give you our first impressions, and then we'll hop over to the OptiShot Sim, and we'll hit a few. Yeah, All right. So. First things first, who is Styx? So Styx, the way they position themselves is they are saying that they are clubs for the modern golfer with a very minimalist feel. So recently, Mike, we had the chance to review Robin clubs. Right. Uh, which again, a lot of similarities there in that Robin has not a ton of options. They try to keep the buying experience simple, but what their goal is, is to make good quality clubs at an affordable price. Okay, I like that. All right, mm -hmm. so what we've got, and, and the way the set comes is, you, the set you can buy online is 12, not 14 clubs. Okay. But they sent us here nine clubs to demo. I think that's all we need. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll take a look at some of the driver, we'll look at some of the irons, wedge, and the putter. We'll roll a couple putts with it as well, uh, and we'll run through the bag. These clubs, right out the gate, are very stacked on the metals side of it. Mm -hmm. So interesting to me to see a set that has a driver, a three wood, a five wood, and a hybrid. Um, but again, depending on who ultimately these are geared for, and we will talk in a few minutes about who we think these are best suited for. Um, if, you're, if you're a newer golfer or a more casual golfer, uh, oftentimes some of these bigger clubs woods, there's something that you're using a little more often, you're trying to get a little bit more distance. So that might be the thinking there. Okay. So Mike, what is your, I mean, we just unboxed these. What's your first impression? All right, first impression right out of the gate, love the black finish. Yeah. Similar to Robin, similar to some other, other clubs on the market. The black finish, it's kind of cool, it's stealth. You show up to a golf course with this, it looks kind of cool. And I like that it's just out of those sticks crossing over as their logo there. I think that's pretty sweet. So again, the stealth look caught me right away. Yeah, not overly logo, not overly branded. And again, that's gonna come back to this big picture of saying who these are for. I think largely when you've got newer golfers or casual golfers who wanna be out there and they want to kind of fit in a little bit more, want to look like they know what they're doing, rather than some of the beginner sets that are out there, are they stick out a little bit like a sore thumb. Yeah. So here you've got something that's aesthetically pleasing. And what I think is interesting is, similar to what we saw with Robin, there is definitely a focus on aesthetics here. So kind of let's just quickly run through a few of what I consider the pros of a set like this. I think the first big pro uh, would be the aesthetics. So it's a, it's a good looking club yep. overall. But secondly, I like the simplicity of the buying experience. We talked about this previously when we reviewed the Robin clubs. One big barrier for a lot of newer golfers getting into the game is being overwhelmed with the choices. And ultimately what newer golfers just want is something that they can rely on mm -hmm. and not feel like they purchased the wrong thing. Right. Right. So the, the buying experience for this is quite simple simple. Uh, they're, they, again, they go back to that minimalist idea. You go on the website, really all you're selecting is your height. Mm -hmm. all That's right? it. That's put your height it. in. That is it. You okay. put your height in and then you're going to get your, your set. So there's not variation there. Um, however, I also put a check for that in the con column as well, because minimalist is great to an extent. The problem is you're also very limited in your choice. So if you are a golfer who wants to get a little bit more dialed in, part of your problem here is you don't have that option. And when we run through the individual clubs, we'll talk about some of them, even individually, the adjustability is, is not there. But sim simple things that we might be used to as your more advanced, uh, more seasoned golfers might be used to like loft, lie angle, um, hosel adjustments, things like that, that's not something you're gonna see here. Right. So the okay. minimalist thing, really depending on where you fall as far as ease of buying versus how much you wanna have that uh, customized customized experience is really gonna be whether that's a pro or a con for you. So the golfer who plays the eight to 10 rounds a year, wants to look like they know what they're doing, have a set that they feel confident in that because it looks good and it may, maybe feel good, but they're not out there trying to smash records. Exactly, exactly, and I think, Another big 
plus here would be the price point. Okay. So normally this thing, this set right here, this, actually this is not the full set, but the 12 piece set falls somewhere around $799. Okay. But right now it could be because of the holidays, um, they're running somewhere around $650, which is reasonable, mm -hmm. right? So again, there's, there's this desire for some companies like this to fill this gap between the real entry level budget sets for about $300 and then your much more expensive sets which could run into the thousands. So here you've got that price. Now again, similar to what we did with Robin, Robin runs around the same price. One thing I will say and something to keep in mind, this set does not come with a bag. Okay. All right, so if you're a golfer who already has a bag, great, you feel like you're putting more of your money into the clubs. But if you're not, factor that into your buying too because you will have to go out and buy a bag. Okay. So that's, that's another yep. thing to, to consider. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out right off the bat where I do feel like this company falls short is in their marketing where they're basically saying the point of this is the, the price where they're kind of emphasizing the idea that the premier brands are overpriced. Okay, gotcha. There is where I'm going to say I disagree. Again, if this company, similar to Robin, was to position itself of being a step up from your real entry level, then I think 100%. By spending a couple hundred extra bucks, you're definitely getting a higher build quality and a better aesthetic than you would get from those clubs that you're buying on Amazon for 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. However, this is not something that in any way I see competing with the big guys. When we're talking about $2,000 sets, the understanding is that there is a lot of research and development and manufacturing tolerances that go into those types of clubs mm -hmm. that you're just never going to see in this. Okay. You're never going to see it. When you talk about the big brands, TaylorMade, Titleist, Callaway, understand that not only are they spending millions on research and development, they're also quality control is something that's through the roof. Mm -hmm. Those are companies that are doing their own manufacturing, things like that. Additionally, if you've ever been through any type of fitting before like we have, you know the importance of shafts, sure. right? All those companies are not manufacturing their own shafts. Shafts in and of themselves are such a unique, um, individualized thing as far as the manufacturers go and there's so much that goes into it that you've got the companies that specialize in it mm -hmm. right so you've got hazardous sure. tensai even flow all those things and there's so much that goes into it here you're not getting that so again where i think the differences are going to be are things like uh, quality control from set to set uh things like um tolerances in that mm -hmm. so where there where there could be variation again there's no shaft options this looks like a decent graphite yeah. shaft mm -hmm. however there's even the variations of the quality of the graphite and the steel that goes into things wow. that is to me is largely what separates those big price tags so again i think if by making the point that the big price tags are unfounded is barking up the wrong tree better positioning for this company would be to say hey these are a step up in quality from the low end set. Sure. It's something you're gonna be able to play, get out there, play golf with and live with. But by trying to say that the big guys are overpriced, I think that's ultimately barking up the wrong trick. No, it makes sense. But again, pros, like I said, it looks like it's a good looking set. I'm interested to see in a minute how we hit them. Um, but really what it comes down to is very similar to the difference between buying a suit off a rack and going and getting a custom fit built mm, suit good point yeah okay just there the the fit ultimately is going to be different different and it's going to be noticeable if you go to the high end and you go through a full fitting and you're going through those different shafts and those different heads and things like that that is going to ultimately lead to a much more well fit here again because there's no nothing even no adjustability in lie angles or anything like that really what they're doing is they're looking for broad appeal mm -hmm. you're saying let's make a good product that broadly appeals to a lot of golfers versus saying let's make a product that can be adaptable by swapping out shafts by swapping out loft and lie and making it fit to the individual golfer yeah i like it that's All right. the big difference so before we hit let's just yeah. recap here because we're getting the 12 piece set it's coming with no bag, and right now it's currently about six hundred fifty. It's about six hundred fifty bucks, and if you get the twelve piece set, you're going to get the driver, three wood, five wood, four hybrid, five iron, six, seven, eight, nine pitching wedge, sand wedge, 
and putter, okay? But here, again, we've got just nine clubs and we're gonna go through and hit them. Um, again, first impressions, one thing I'll tell you right off the bat, looking at these irons, they're definitely more of a game improvement. Uh, big cavity back, um, as far as you can see on that head there, if it was something that you were used to hitting more of a player's iron or a blade, this is gonna be a dramatic difference for you. So again, it's one more thing that to me, points to these clubs being geared more towards your newer and more casual golfers. Okay. But again, if I've got a buddy who's just getting into the game and he's looking for something that's gonna be able to hit it for you know a couple seasons, I know that the quality is there, um, but again, he's not ready to stretch it out to go with a full bore, full fit, top of the line. That's somebody that I'm gonna air in this direction. Okay. Ultimately though, if you were also someone to me, you came to me and said, Frank, I'm okay with choices. I've got about 800 bucks to spend. Another option might be going and looking at some used clubs and where you could get those top of the line manufacturers for that price. But again, it's gonna be used. So it's really gonna be that kind of trade off of what you're looking for. Perfect. All right. So what do you say? Let's get in the sim. Let's hit a couple and we'll give you guys some more of our impressions. All right, Mike, so what do you say we hit the six iron first? Okay. Uh, this particular set they sent us didn't come with a seven iron, but six iron is going to be the closest thing. Okay, let's give it a whirl. It's normally my 185 club. I hit it quite often throughout a round. So let's see. A little bit lighter than normal. Good shot there. Mm hmm. So you're not quite seeing the same distance. I'm not you... seeing the distance. And maybe it's because of the, the, the shaft. Right. And you also know? we're seeing a little bit of a wider dispersion than we normally would. Right. Which little right, little left. You guys, as you know, if you've seen our other videos, when we do our fittings, where we dial in dispersion is largely with shafts, shaft weighting and things like that. And I believe, Mike, you're used to probably a little bit of a heavier shaft yeah, than for yours. Sure. So I can yeah. feel this thing whipping through a little bit. So not for my golf game. Quickly, I'm seeing that. But... Uh, the true test is going to be really for beginners. Does this stack up for that entry level? Right. All right, so the six iron that Mike is swinging, uh, it is what they're calling a stiff uh, shaft. Again, there could be variations in what one company to the next calls stiff, uh, but it's stiff. And just looking at the specifications here, uh, we're looking at a 25 degree loft. So again, uh, what they're really looking to do here with this set is find something in the middle that would fit the most golfers, at least in this particular demographic. Um, but there are not variations. You cannot select, at least as of the time of this recording on their website, you can't select different shafts, uh, stiffnesses or weights. Um, so again, graphite shafts, again, is something Mike that you and I are not quite used to. Um, but again, uh, the idea that we're not trying to, it would be an unfair comparison to try to compare these to the clubs we're normally playing. So instead what we're trying to do is look at these through the lens of saying, if you are a newer or a more casual golfer who is just looking for well-built clubs at a decent price, does this fit the bill? So that's ultimately what we're, we're comparing here. There you go. So right off the bat, I'm pushing a few of them right, which if again, if we were going through a fitting, I'd immediately be looking at things like lie angle and seeing if we needed to make a slow adjustment, but that's not something we can do here. Again though, newer golfers might adjust to the club a little bit more than having the club adjust to them. Yeah, another one, solid contact, just pushed a little bit right. All right, Mike, let's hit the club everybody wants to see. Okay. Right, let's hit the driver. So here, size-wise, 460 cc. That's gonna be something you're a little bit used to. But again, where you're not gonna see is there is no uh, adjustability as far as the, the standard degree is 10.5, no hosel adjustment, no weighting adjustment, okay? But let's have a hit, see how it goes. Okay. Hit it very high. Yeah, a bit of a pop-up there. Bit of a pop-up there. I'm gonna try to lower my tee on these better connection, better connection there again Still. maybe maybe it's just because we're hitting it indoors but it is a, a bit of a sharper ping sound coming off that driver yep a little bit sharper but still um, 
it, like I said, the important takeaway here is that it does feel solid off the face. You don't feel like you're gonna break anything, even swinging it. What was your swing speed there, Mike? 110. 100, there, so there you go. 110 mile an hour swing speed, which you're not necessarily gonna get from a newer golfer, and there's really no concern with the club being able to handle it, so I think that's a big takeaway. So one thing I wanna point out, when we did the Robin review, again, this would be like what I would consider the closest competitor to this. One thing I liked with Robin is that they put a lot of the money that goes in the set into the driver, knowing that a lot of um, a lot of newer golfers, I mean, this is the fun club to hit. It's what you're gonna to wanna to hit, and you're gonna to wanna to be able to hit some fairways. So what I would say is, if you look at the two, it's almost no comparison. The Robin driver has swing weights that can be adjusted. It's got the hosel adjustment here. So comparing the two head to head, I'm getting the Robin every time. But again, trying to look at it through the lens of just someone who's gonna be making this buying decision, which is going to be either a new or a casual golfer, a large part of that might just be bought on just aesthetics and what you think looks, you know, what you like to have that kind of look. But let's hit it and see. So again, pushing it slightly right, which to me, if I had the ability to adjust the hose a little bit, might take some of that right push out. Could also just be me. But um, again, no adjustability here, but it's still a solid built club. Let's hit it one more time. So about the same, right push, carrying about 220. So about 20, 30 yards less than what I'm used to seeing. And again, no ability to dial that in, but still a solid club that a, a newer or a casual golfer can rely on. Just as a comparison, let's just hit it up against the, uh, the Robin driver. So Robin driver, we're gonna do this all in the stock setting, stock hosel, stock, uh, stock weighting. Came out lower. Lower flight there. You had a bigger ball speed there. A little more further on the carry. Let's try one more on that. Again, pushing it a little bit right. So if I was dialing this in, that's three shots in a row that went right. I would use the adjustments here to give myself a little bit more of turning that face over. But as a golfer, we could also adjust to it. Let's see. You know, and let's see, we've got bigger ball speed, a little more of carry here. All right, so I think a lot of similarities. To me, the real difference is gonna come in with just with the Robin being able to do adjust it. But every golfer is different. You may out of the box, hit the sticks a little bit better. Either way, proof of concept, they're both solidly built clubs. One thing I will point out, and here's where I do see a major difference in the two sets, again, comparing them because they're the closest two that I can think of. The Robin set, the wedge is definitely a little bit more of a player's wedge in the way the structure of the head is versus the sticks. You can see that nice, really wide sole at the bottom, much bigger cavity back feel. That's something that is going to be I think more appealing to newer golfers, but if you're looking at an ability to shape or work the ball, here's again where you're gonna have a limitation. I'd say work, shaping the ball, working the ball, advantage Robin, uh, forgiveness, um, kind of ease of use, just overall usability for a newer golfer. There I'd say advantage sticks, but Mike, where are you here? All right, we're at seven at Pebble. I mean, I don't know if I have the right distance here, but we're gonna try. We're gonna put the sandwich to work. It's 109 yards, it's probably gonna come up short, but. I want to shoot it at green. Okay. Go, 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 go. Oh no, I had the distance. You had the distance, for sure. Okay. Also, uh, I could tell if that was at a bit of a miss hit. Bit of a miss hit. And it was forgiving, like, oh, there you go. So look, this is where the black face will kind of help. Out a little bit out there towards the toe, but that's where that real cavity back is going to help because you ended up, you hit it pretty much straight there. Okay. A little bit of a push to the right even on an off-center hit. Straighter? Listen, yep. But, you know. It could be a green, uh, almost. But this is where this might be great for sticks. I mean, look where I hit that. Yeah, so okay. there's your forget. And I am, as a, as a newbie, as an amateur golfer, I'm green side, chip on, hopefully one Green button. side and you were low on the, on the face, way out towards the top. So very forgiving, it looks so like. Forgiveness is, big check in the forgiveness column. Yeah. All right, so the other thing, so we, we, we see the forgiveness, and a wedge is gonna be an important club, scoring club in anybody's bag. But another important thing with wedges is spin. 
So let's see what kind of spin numbers. What we spin get. are you looking for? I would say what I'm used to seeing is anywhere from six thousand and up. Okay. I mean, on a wedge, really, I'd love to see nine. You know, eight, 9,000 RPM for my game. You sometimes see, see 10, 12. 10 and 12, because <laughs> you got such a nice steep swing. But for me, I'd be happy with that. But let's just see if this we're able to put spin on the ball with this wedge. Okay, you felt like you dug a little bit, That's took a nice divot. As much spin as I can put on it, let's I see. I like the straight shot, bounce up there a little bit. Let's get on the dance floor. All right, let's, let's see, see what we got. 100 yard shot. Frank looking for 6,000. Uh, 8,000. 8,300. 8,300. Happy with that. All right, so it may not be the sexiest club, but it's the money club. That's right. So first thing I'll notice is uh, feels very heavily weighted in the head and also could partially be because again, graphite shaft. Graphite shaft through the bag. Definitely something I'm not used to is a graphite shaft in a putter. Um, all stick shafts, not aftermarket. Uh, and then last thing is the stock grip that comes on it is a much fatter grip than I'm used to. Some golfers love it, you either love it or you hate it, but I will say it does come with a fat grip. I know, I know I'm not comparing it to these, but how does it compare to a premium? Is that steel just much heavier? I just feel like with a steel shaft, it feels a little bit more evenly weighted, but you can adjust the weight in any of these materials. It really depends on the overall build of the club. Okay. So if you look at like a Scotty Cameron, there's my midpoint right there, my balance point. Let's see what we get with this. My midpoint is all the way down here. Mm. So that just shows you that most of the weight, easily 90% of the weight is in the head of the club versus having it a little bit more of a midpoint balance there. Yeah, even for a club right. too. And yeah, and you can see here, this particular Scotty is about a 30 degree toe hang. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we get right here. So we're at about a 45 degree toe hang, which is Fairly standard yeah. with putters, but let's see. All right, feel is big with putting. What's first impression? Not bad. I, I would prefer to have a little bit of that weight shifted away from the head. It, it You do feel it. It is a very light shaft. The grip bigger gives a little bit of weight balance down the side, but it does feel like the majority of the mass is in the head. Yeah, I mean, you can make putts with it. it, it it's going to be, you know, it's not a blade style. It's a little bit more of a mallet style. Again, I would love to see maybe as the company progresses and develops, you'll see some more options where you can kind of change that. Again, those are the things that are going to be missing. You can't choose your toe hang. You can't choose your weighting. You can't choose your, your head style. But that's that simplicity that potentially a newer golfer is going to look for just saying, I just want something that works. Buy it. Go. You pick your height. You put in your credit card information, and boom, you're done. That's it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna give some away, but before we do that. Yes. I know a lot of you are thinking black clubs, scuff marks, are they cleanable? Right. Uh, can we clean them? Will it always look like this? Right, because you're wondering, is it only gonna look good that first moment I take it out of the set? So what do you say? You got some wipes there? You wanna see if you can wipe it off? Got some wet wipes here, very saturated, soaked. Give it a good brush. Okay. How about the bottom of that club? I know. Come up, and then you got the mat stuff, which you see the scuffs from the mat right off. Yeah, and that's just a simple rag with Look some at that. alcohol. That's it. I mean, you'll get some residual whites in here, which who knows, maybe with the right groove. Little elbow grease? Elbow grease, you can get it in, but no question about it. This red line will eventually fade over time if that even helps you at all, if that's something for you. Uh, but the white scuffs do, do a race. All right, so to wrap this all up in a nutshell, to talk about who these clubs are for, mm -hmm. what I would say is, again, if you are a golfer who is a casual golfer or a beginner golfer who's looking to have a build quality that is a step above what you see in those beginner, quote, really beginner sets, yep. and you want something that's gonna be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, a little bit less embarrassing to be out there on the golf course with, this set is for you. However, just like I said in that Robin review, I still am a firm believer that for beginner golfers, the best set for you is the set that you can afford. Mm. Whatever gets you out there playing golf, so $700 or $650, whatever it's on sale for at the moment, might still be out of your price range. In that case, go and buy the $300 set. Whatever gets you out there learning the game. However, 
If this is a little bit more in your reach and you're able to spend a little bit more, I think you're gonna get a better build quality. Sure. I think you're gonna get a better looking club and it's gonna be a club that you can probably play for a few more years mm -hmm. than those beginner intro sets. I agree with that. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm impressed with and I like seeing companies like Sticks like Robin, who are coming and they're bringing some new options to the table. Again, do I think either one of them is a valid competitor to Callaway, TaylorMade, Titleist, those names? No. Ping, all those names? Absolutely not. I don't think that they should be in that same conversation. But golf is big enough. There's mm -hmm. enough of us out there and there's enough different types of golfers that there is a fit for something like this. And I think that's what the fit is. Makes sense, man. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about, again, we said we're going to give a set away. I think what we might do is just wrap this set up and send it to somebody. Right. All right. Okay. So we're going to do this really simple. Drop a comment below. Let us know what's your impressions. What's your thought on this company, on Sticks. Take a look at their website. Let us know. What do you think their spot in the market is and who this is for? And you know what? Maybe even throw in there. If you think that this is a good fit for you, we want to hear from you. Yeah, for sure. Because like I said, there are going to be golfers that this is a good fit for them. Let us know why you think it's a good fit for you. We'll pick one lucky comment. We'll send them away. Easy enough. Easy yep. enough. Love All it. right. So guys, make sure you guys drop those comments below. Give Sticks a look. We'll post all their information in a link in the video description. Appreciate them sending us these to check them out. And like I said, I think we've got good things on the horizon as we see more and more golf companies bringing stuff like this into the fold. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you again soon.